to attract more tourism. I'm talking about this type of tourism, sports tourism. If we can hold uh, championships or sports events using the Nile, using uh, Rowick, for example, and so on. What do you think about that? I think it's a great idea. I think some people thought about it before, but they didn't have the real opportunity to organize something big, mm. uh, something that will attract uh, other attention. But it's great. I'm, I'm here and every day I'm, uh, I see uh, people rowing, uh, going uh, forth and back uh, mm. on the Nile and it's, it's really great. Mm -hmm. So what about the other industries that are related to the River Nile now? Because we spoke about tourism, uh, transportation and sports in your opinion. What are the other industries that can be relating to the Nile here in Egypt? I think I think there is uh, a great opportunity for people to uh, have their own uh, forms mm -hmm. on the Nile because mm -hmm. I've, I've been selling the Nile uh, since uh, 1990s mm -hmm. and I've seen uh, places which are really deserted mm -hmm. so people can bring their can 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 uh, start some small village for their own but it needs some uh, government effort to encourage them to do that. Mm -hmm. I've seen some beautiful landscapes. I, I would have been there if I'm not living in Cairo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll live there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, how do you see the role of the media in promoting the importance of the Nile River in all fields when it comes to tourism, when it comes to preserving uh, the Nile, uh, protecting it from uh, pollution, everything? How do you see the role of the media in this regard? I think you are doing a great job. Here we are. <laughs> and yeah, you are. are. But it, it's not, uh, not enough. Mm -hmm. I think it's not enough. You're doing some great I think effort. so too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really. Yeah. Mm. I think uh, by being here, you and the others, that will be uh, great for people, that will be great for all Egypt to attract the attention of the Egyptians and uh, uh, the other people to uh, the beauty uh, and how precious it is for the Egyptian and for the whole world mm. because it offered uh, the biggest ancient civilization in the whole world. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of Egyptians are concerned by uh, the prospect of building the Ethiopian Renaissance Dam on the River Nile here in Egypt and the water share for the Egyptians, of course, as a citizen and as uh, an owner of a Nile Dahabiya and you've been sailing the Nile uh, for about 10 or 20 years. How do you see the prospect of building a dam on uh, the River Nile and how would it be affecting the industries related to the River Nile and the watershed of Egypt? I think it's a big debate <laughs> till now. Hmm. Uh, but um, speaking for tourism, I don't think it will be affected greatly because of it. Uh, but speaking uh, for irrigation and agriculture, maybe. Maybe that will be a, a little bit, uh, some shortage in the north. Especially there, I've been there. I've uh, I've seen some uh, lack of waters somewhere here or there. Uh, I think we need we need some more efforts, and they think the government is doing great efforts uh, this way uh, to handle this problem and to have an uh, agreement with Ethiopia to uh, have better uh, life for us and for them too, and for everybody. We can do it together. Okay. Uh, Mr. Atman, as a tourism expert, we have been discussing since 2011, since uh, the tourism sector has been hit hard uh, by the political turmoil here in the country, we have been discussing means of promoting tourism. Now, before 2011, the, um, particularly in 2010, the uh, tourism rates reached its highest. Again, that wasn't enough for uh, so many people working in the industry and uh, the people like you working in the tourism field say that Egypt has incredible potentials that are not well uh, used, that haven't been reached yet. And they have been discussing over and over strategies to uh, promote tourism uh, here in Egypt. Uh, of course, after uh, the, the, uh, the 2011 uh, revolution and what has been happening and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the drop that happened uh, for tourism, uh, tourism experts started to think of even reviving. The, the point or reaching back the point of 2010 which wasn't satisfactory for for many people 
you as a person working in the industry how do you see this how do you see uh, the capabilities of a country like Egypt which has the Nile which has the beaches which has um, the beautiful weather these the sunny weather the museums the archaeology everything how can we uh, have like practical strategies in, in this regard exactly <laughs> I think I can answer you by just one word promotion we this is very important because there isn't enough marketing in uh, Egypt. No. Yes. There is no not not enough marketing anywhere at all. You have some place like Spain. Yes. Which has some uh, beaches, and it is the number one destination for the whole world. Yes. C can you realize it? Seventeen million people goes to just for the beaches in Spain. We do have beaches much more beautiful. It's not only beaches. I mean, why aren't we targeting certain countries? I mean, we depend on certain nationalities that come to Egypt from Russia, from um, Germany, from France, for example. But what about other countries? What about uh, the Far East, um, Asia? What about uh, Latin America, for example? Exactly. We were, we were having some real efforts here. And uh, we, have, we have had uh, some uh, real mass tourism from China, from Japan, and from the Far East, and uh, from Latin America, especially in summer. Yeah. The only people who go to Luxor and Maswan in summer are Latin people. Yes. <laughs> yes. you realize it? Yeah. <laughs> Which is the heat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really cute. They do have winter by <laughs> this yeah. time, and they are really seeking for some of our heat, and they are really enjoying it. I was personally, I, I didn't expect to uh, to see uh, so much tourists there, but uh, it was uh, a beautiful surprise for me. And I, I think I think uh, Egypt will rise up again, but slowly. But do you think that um, uh, we have enough tourists coming from China, for example, or Japan? Korea? Not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. We are uh, like. I've been um, in Dahab uh, last week, and I've seen Chinese tourists, and I was surprised. I didn't and didn't even know that we have Asian tourists coming to Egypt. <laughs> we do have. We do yeah, have I didn't know Lots that. of Asian people here in Egypt, but and they do like what they see. Yeah, yeah. And they do come back, but uh, we have real competition. Hmm. They have uh, choices abroad, uh, France or Europe or uh, USA, uh, uh, but for Egypt they do not know about it uh, enough. Hmm. But do you think that Egypt can be offering cheaper alternatives for Spain and France and the countries that you've spoken it's about? Already cheap, Ahmed. It's already cheap. It's already I, cheap. I, I think like Hannah so said, what is no, wrong? Not what at is all. the no, wrong no, no. strategy that we're going we just, through with? I mean, I, for 500 euros, the tourists can come all-inclusive, spend mm -hmm. 10 days, including the flight, mm -hmm. and uh, drinking, and eating, and, and uh, the trips, and everything, and the sightseeing, and everything, mm -hmm. for, just, for less than 500 euros, actually. Exactly, which is not fair. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's not fair for Egypt. So what can be done by the country, and the government, and the people to be promoting tourism, not just like what Hala said, not just for some nationalities, but for the whole world? Exactly. No, we about the government now. Uh, mm -hmm. She's having a really hard time to to bring them back, or to, to earn their trust back. Uh, I think there is some good signs, uh, but there is still time. We need some time, and I think at the level of um, people working at the tourism business, uh, they do uh, some real efforts. Mm -hmm. At one of them, I'm 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 trying my best. And really, I'm having uh, some outcomes of it uh, mm. for now. Uh, I didn't expect to um, to have it uh, so quickly, but uh, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> it's coming back. Yeah, it's coming back. <laughs> Mr. Shadi Atman, uh, owner of uh, uh, Ship Cruise, the Havaya Cruise. Thank you very much uh, for your insightful information and for uh, uh, being with us in this edition of Mal Cruise. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. I'm really glad to be with you here today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shadi, so much. And we'll be going out for a quick break, so stay tuned.